I'm David Richard Boyd, and I'm an optimistic environmentalist. Now, some of you may think jumbo shrimp, open secrets, working vacations, that's an oxymoron. But I'd love to be able to share inspiring stories about dozens of endangered species that have recovered, about dramatic improvements in air and water quality for billions of human beings, about the recovery of the Earth's vital ozone layer, and about the global elimination of dozens of dangerous chemicals. But we're here tonight to talk about energy. So what do we need to do about energy? Well, it's actually, I think, the most exciting chapter in our story of environmental progress. We need to do three things. We need to use energy more intelligently. We need to stop spewing carbon dioxide into the atmosphere when we burn fossil fuels. And thirdly, we need to make sure that we're producing more renewable energy. And the good news is that we have the technology and the willpower to do all of these things. This is a laneway house built in Vancouver to uh, super energy efficient standards. It uses less than, it uses 80 to 90% less energy for heating and cooling than a standard new Canadian home. Now, and once you've got that kind of energy decrease, you can use solar panels on the roof to make it a net zero building. Sure, these are still the exception to the rule in Canada today, but in the European Union and California, this is now the building code. As of 2020, all new construction must be net zero energy. So this is the future of building. In European cities like Stockholm, turning to transportation, nine in 10 commuting trips in Stockholm are done on foot, on bicycle, and on public transit. That's the exact inverse of some North American cities. We've got a tremendous upsurge in car sharing here in North America. Vancouver's a leader with one in six residents belonging to car sharing programs. Huge environmental benefits. And thank you to the millennials in the room who are turning away from car ownership in record numbers. Of course, some people still do like to drive, and so it's great to see the emergence of zero emission vehicles. And still fairly small in terms of market share, but public policy can tur turbocharge their adoption. So in Norway today, one in three new vehicles sold is an electric vehicle. Pretty amazing. So this, the first message is, can we use energy more intelligently? Yes, we can. Can we stop polluting the atmosphere with fossil fuels? Well, China, of all places, has started to demolish coal-fired power plants near big cities. They've also uh, pledged not to build any new coal-fired plants for the foreseeable future, and they just shut down 1,000 coal mines. In the US, more than 200 coal mines have been shut down since Barack Obama became president. Another 150 will close down in the next five years. In Vietnam, they were planning to build 44 new coal-fired power plants. They just decided not to build any of those. So coal, yikes. Uh, this is a stock chart of Peabody Energy, the largest privately owned coal company in the world. Five years ago, the share price was $1,090. It closed last week at $2.18. To put that in context, if you had 100 shares five years ago, that was worth over $100,000. Now it's worth about 200 bucks. Ouch. Let's hope the Suncare, Suncor chart never looks like this, huh? <laughs> and so what's replacing coal? Well, for a few years it was natural gas, but in 2011 something remarkable happened. For the first time, new investment in fossil fossil fuel electricity was surpassed by new investment in renewable electrical, electrical capacity. And every year since, that gap has widened. You can visit German cities now where almost every building has solar panels on the roof. We're seeing utility scale solar farms like this one in Southern California. This is 600 megawatts, over 9 million solar panels, enough to power hundreds of thousands of homes. And bigger farms than this are under construction in countries from Morocco to India, measuring in the thousands of megawatts. So solar is really taking off. And I just show you this one chart. I'm an academic, so I have to have at least one chart in my presentation. Look at the curve. From almost no solar energy at the turn of the 21st century, China just passed Germany to become number one in the world in installed solar electrical generating capacity. And if there's oh, another chart, uh, if there's one thing that you remember from my talk today, in the year 2000, at the turn of this century, globally, there was one gigawatt of installed, installed solar electrical capacity. The International Energy Agency, which is the world's preeminent forecasting organization, said if we get the policies and the investments in place, we could get to seven gigawatts by 2020. Well, do you think we made it? We actually add seven gigawatts to the global grid every six weeks. 
We blew past 200 megawatts last year. We're on track to blow past 500, sorry, five, 200 gigawatts. We'll blow past 500 gigawatts by 2020. And this is something called exponential growth, which human, bra human brains have a really hard time understanding. So let me just quickly demonstrate. If I take a sheet of paper, half a millimeter thick, and fold it in half, it's doubled. If I fold it in half again, it's quadrupled. Lo and behold, a third time, it's eight times as thick as it originally was. If I folded this piece of paper 51 times, how thick do you think it would be? As thick as a dictionary? No. As tall as a person? No. It would reach to the sun, 150 million kilometers. Now that's just hard to wrap your mind around, but solar energy is doubling and has been doubling every 30 months since the mid-1990s. So watch out for solar. And of course, critics will say, well, what do you do? The sun doesn't shine at night. Well, humans are a pretty ingenious species, and so we figure this out, energy storage. This is a Spanish solar plant that came online in 2011. They store the sun's energy, some of it, during the day underground in vats of molten salt, and they've been producing electricity around the clock since 2011. There's similar facilities in the United States that are 20 times this large. I haven't talked about wind. The first wind farm in Canada, 10 megawatts, built in 1993 in southern Alberta. We've now got over 10,000 megawatts of wind, good for seventh in the world. So some countries, have already reached the holy grail of 100% renewable electricity. Norway, Iceland, Paraguay, Costa Rica's at 99%. Canada's at 70, but we'll get there. The city of Vancouver, as Deputy Mayor Deal said, has already reached, uh, adopted a plan for getting to 100% by 2050, not just for electricity, but for buildings and transportation as well. So this is a tremendously exciting and transformative time that we live in, my friends. This is probably one of the greatest transformations that the world has ever undergone, and I want you to all be part of it. Viva la revolution!